Hi, my name is Christine Marshall. I'm an instructor in biology here at PA. I'm currently teaching an elective to 11th and 12th graders called the Neurobiology of Learning, Memory, and Sleep. A big part of this course is a community engagement project designed to support incoming ninth graders during their very first term here at Andover. So the ninth graders are bumping up to high school, facing a whole new range of expectations, both academically and socially, and they find that they often need to update their study behaviors or change their general habits in order to meet all of these new challenges. But they don't necessarily know how to make these adjustments on their own. So they really benefit from connecting with older students who know a lot about learning and memory and who otherwise just make wonderful mentors and enjoy sharing all the wisdom they've acquired during their time at Andover with some younger kids. We did a project um, with where we pair up with a group of freshmen um, and we introduce them to a topic that we've been learning. So I taught them about sleep and memory. Basically for six days, we texted them um, one aspect of our topic each day and a question to gauge their learning and a practical step for them to take that day related to that topic. Uh, one of the things that I talked about was how blue light affects your sleep. So uh, one of the steps for that day was turn the phone brightness down as low as possible and get off your devices at 10 p.m. Our brains are said to be neuroplastic, meaning that they're always changing from experience. This doesn't mean that our brain cells are moving around. We wouldn't necessarily want that, but they are communicating with different levels of emphasis and weighting. And that relative strength difference is something we can shift through activity. So by modifying our behavior, and in particular, our habits and routines, we can make certain pathways in our brain more robust than others. And that makes them more likely to be activated and available to us when we need them later. And then there's sleep, which can be a tough sell for teenagers. Convincing teens to prioritize sleep above everything else that's going on in their life takes a daily collective effort from a lot of people here on campus. And it's wonderful when we have positive modeling from our older students. So working with seniors who understand the physiology of sleep and why it is that without regular high quality sleep, we're simply less able to learn from our experiences is pretty powerful. Usually when I go to bed, it takes me a while to fall asleep. But um, that night when I didn't uh, use blue light or any electronics for like an hour before I went to bed, I actually went to sleep way quicker. So it was, pr it was a pretty easy challenge for me and most of them were easy and I enjoyed doing them. And they actually worked, which was pretty awesome to see. This time in their life is so important. They're biologically wired up to explore their environment and it's a drive. There's just so much to the world that's new and exciting, and Andover offers them this vibrant, supportive environment in which to learn and grow and experiment through the trials and error of living. Their brains are literally testing out all the different connections that formed during their development. And things feel good, they smell good, they're going through puberty, obviously a big experience for them. So I think something to keep in mind as a central theme is that our nervous systems develop based on activity. So we grow stronger where we use our bodies, including our brain. So as this fine tuning of pathways linking different areas in our brain continues throughout adolescence, their behaviors and their routines are shaping how their brains are forming. So we want them to develop strong, efficient pathways that make it easier for them to pay attention or explore new ideas critically and efficiently or develop a wide range of skills that 
will enable them to learn all that they can from their experiences here on campus. Learning from an older student um, was, I don't know, it was a new experience and I personally really enjoyed it. Hearing from her about how uh, we can better our sleep and how that has helped her, um, I think, I thought it was especially meaningful. That also for me was one of my favorite part things about this project was not only getting to teach the freshmen about the things that we learned in this elective, but also getting to know them, especially this year when things, most things are online um, and we don't have many opportunities to meet people in person. I thought it was a really nice way to get to know people that we usually wouldn't have met otherwise. I love working with our kids. I do find it such a privilege and an honor to be part of their lives. and to bear witness to their growth. They themselves don't often notice how much they're growing and contributing to our campus while they're here because they're just simply too busy living their lives. So as the adults, it's really meaningful to be able to work alongside them and find new ways to support them during their journey. They're preparing themselves and we're helping them be ready to step out into the world as intelligent, compassionate, and confident young adults. It's pretty cool.